Today I'm going to replace the cooling fan control module on a Pontiac Solstice GXP. The 2.0 liter turbo GXP has a variable speed fan in it which is controlled by a digital control module. If you have one that goes out and you search for it, you'll find that General Motors does not offer the control module by itself, but you have to buy it with the fan assembly, and the whole assembly is $350, which is way too much to spend. As a GM car owner, you know we have to save all the money we can to pay for additional repairs that we're going to need. This is the second one I've done. The first time I did it, um, I did take out the whole fan assembly from the car and uh, tested it by hooking 12 volts directly to the fan motor and found it spun up by itself so I knew the motor was okay so it must be the control module and I was able to find the control module online by itself for around $60 and I was thrilled to be able to do the repair myself for only $60 and get it back together and be on my way. That repair is kind of a pain because uh, to get the, the fan assembly out, you have to take off uh, a lot of the uh, air filtration, the air filter, the cowl on top of the engine, and the uh, radiator hose, and you end up having to then refill the cooling system when you're done. Here's the cooling fan control module. It's really unique. Um, if you search online, uh, you'll find that, I, I don't know if there's any other GM cars that use this, very, very few, so it's hard to find, but actually, uh, I think it's the Ford Crown Victoria and some other car makers use this module. So they're actually out there and available to purchase. I got this one for uh, $18 on eBay, um, new in box. Uh, I don't think there's a brand or anything, so I'd say it's from China. They got a real neat, unique shape to them. So if you search for uh, cooling fan control module and start looking at the pictures like on eBay, you you'll see this one right away and you'll know that's it. Um, it's got two connectors on it, one coming from your your car's computer, uh, 12 volts, plus there's a little uh, digital cable in there to indicate the speed, and then output to the fan, uh, 12 volts variable speed to get the fan the proper uh, speed. It only, it's held on by these two tabs, they stick in the slots, and then one Phillips screw that goes right through this, and this is mounted on the engine fan assembly itself. Uh, the first time this module went out, in my car. There was no uh, service engine soon light or anything. I just noticed my car was getting hot in traffic and when I pulled into the garage I no longer had that uh, engine cooling fan sound of a jet turbine taking off. I just kind of noticed one day I don't, I don't think that fan's running. So I took out that fan and found that you know the module is bad. The second time it failed it did have a service engine soon light and indicated a cooling fan problem and I had a hunch it was probably that module again. So with the whole fan being $350 plus labor at a GM dealer, um, if you, you know, on your own, check the fuses and uh, if you got a voltmeter, you could unplug the power going into this and very carefully probe it to make sure it's getting its 12 volts and then you'll have a good idea that it's either your fan or your control module has failed. I don't know how often the fans fail, I guess they could. With this module being only $18, I feel it's a good bet to try it. If you've got a problem with your fan not running, get one of these and, and see if it'll get you going. I've got a, I found a trick to install these much easier. I'm excited to show it to you today. So let's get started. Unfortunately, it's raining in Indiana today, so we don't have the benefit of the bright natural light outside. We gotta do the repair inside. So I've dug out my uh, headband flashlight to help us see what we're doing. All right, if we look in the engine bay, up front is the cooling fan right down here, and that has that module attached to it as one unit. And typically when you uh, do this repair, you have to take off the engine cover and the uh, air cleaner and the uh, air intake up front of it and this um, large radiator hose and then you can pull the fan up and take it out and replace it and that turns out to be kind of a pain in the rear end so what we're going to do today we know that this module is held on by one Phillips screwdriver, which is in a really difficult location to get to. 
But I have found if you have a 90 degree screwdriver, you can get that right out and replace this module without having to take the whole car apart. In the bottom of my ratchet set, I keep this gadget I got. Probably a gift. I've had it down here for like 15 years. And this, uh, what is this? Spec Tools. Um, it was probably kind of like a as seen on TV type of thing. But there's a ratchet in here that's kind of a low profile and uh, 90 degrees. It's got different bits to it. And it has this adapter here, which allows you to connect a Phillips, Phillips bit. So you can make a really low profile 90 degree screwdriver. And this is the trick to doing this repair. So before you begin, you need to find some kind of 90 degree screwdriver. I don't know if you can still get these, but worth a search. Spec tool squeeze wrench. It'd be worth Googling that. I found that the little Phillips driver bit that came with this tool isn't quite long enough because when you're trying to get to that screw, you're blocked by this connector here and it won't reach. So I found um, my cordless impact driver has a bit. And this one is just a hair too long. That's too long to fit in the narrow space that you have. But I found this double-ended bit off my cordless screwdriver. It's just right. It kind of sticks funny in here about halfway through. And that works just right to get to that screw. So this is what I'm going to do in, in the engine compartment. This is mounted against the fan. I'm going to reach in and with both hands. And with one hand, I'm going to push this against the Phillips screw to get a solid mate. And then I'm going to use my other hand to crank it and rotate the screw out. I can also reach in and get the tab on this connector and unplug it. And then I found then walking around to the other side of the car, I can reach from the other side and pull this side of the connector off. And then I've got my module free. Let's see, the first thing I'm gonna do uh, reaching from the driver's side of the car, I'm going to reach in there right there and pull that connector off before I start loosening any screws. Make sure in case I have to do any pulling or anything, I'll have solidly mounted. I'm just going to reach in and pull that connector off. And then walking around to the other side of the car, I kind of reach in and pull the other end of the connector off, which is right here. I've already loosened it. It's this connector and there's our module right there and that's the Phillips screwdriver that the Phillips screw that we need to take out. Now I've got my 90 degree screwdriver in place on the screw and I'm just going to reach right in there and I'm going to put the phone down use two hands. I'm going to reach right in there with one hand I'm going to hold it against the screw and the other hand I'm going to ratchet the 90 degree screwdriver. All right, and here we have the module coming out and the one going in. It wasn't too bad, it didn't take long at all to get the single screwdriver screw out. Here's the screw, and we'll put it in our new module. And let's do that in. So the tabs, uh, these two metal tabs go in slots. I'm gonna reach down under the, in between the en engine and the cooling fan, slide it into the slot, and then screw the, Phillips screw there over there and then from one side connect the one connector walk around the car to the other side and connect the other connector and we'll be good to go all right there we go easy cooling fan control module replacement on the Pontiac Solstice GXP and my squeeze wrench has earned its place in my toolbox let's take this thing for a test run